Hello everyone. In this session, we'll discuss about real-time clock RTC in LPC2148. Basically, we use this peripheral uh, in in the applications where uh, uh, time-based actions to be taken. So, time-based applications require these kind of peripherals. So, let us see the features of RTC, and also we'll see how to configure this RTC and how to access this peripheral. So these are the features of uh, RTC. Now it maintains a calendar as well as clock, and uh, we can also provide the supply to this RTC uh, by using uh, the main voltage 3.3 volts, or else by using a battery power system. And uh, it provides us seconds, minutes, hours, day of month, month, year, day of week, and day of year. So all these are the outputs of this RTC peripheral. And uh, we can also provide the clock signal to this RTC in two ways, or by using two sources. One is by using external oscillator, or else by using the internal clock, which is coming from the VPB divider. Okay. So these are the basic or important features of the RTC inside LPC2148. So why do we require a clock signal? Why? Well, because uh, if any device is pro having some resistors, then definitely it should require clock signal. Now that clock source is given. Uh, in, in two ways here, one is by using the crystal oscillator and uh, whose frequency should be 32 kilohertz or else by using the internal VPB divider. Okay, so <coughs> let us see the architecture. Now, as you can see here, uh, we can give the clock signal uh, by using two sources here. One is a RTC oscillator that is external crystal can be connected here, which is of uh, 32.76 kilohertz or else by using the internal clock now that gets divided by some registers inside this block those are called as prescale registers and the output of this particular block would be 32.768 now why we need to use only 32.768 because it is a frequency which will give you the real time uh, clock okay now out of these two sources any one of these clock sources is selected with the help of mux now that is given to the clock generator okay and uh, we have set of registers like time counters now these registers are always compared with one more set of registers that is alarm registers. Okay, so these registers are always compared with these registers, and it will generate an interrupt based on the identical values. Okay, and uh, we can also generate some interrupts like alarm register or uh, uh, by counter increment interrupt enable. So all these are the interrupts that we can generate with RTC. Okay, so let us see what is RTC. So RTC is nothing but uh, it's it's nothing but set of registers. So it has some uh, some registers. So let us see what are those registers. Now these registers are classified into four types, like uh, miscellaneous registers, time counter registers, alarm registers, and reference clock divider registers. Okay. So we'll see each and every uh, each and every set of registers. Okay. Now these are the registers which we are talking about. Now all these registers. Uh, we need to access if if I'm using RTC based on my requirement, okay, or based on our requirement. So these registers are classified into four types. Just now we have seen these are those four types, okay. So let us see each and every set of these registers. Initially, we'll start with the miscellaneous registers. It has a complete of uh, it has a complete set of eight registers as you can see here, and uh, ILR, CTC, CCR, CIIR, AMR, and then C times zero to time 2 okay we'll discuss about each and every register in detail initially we'll start with ilr register which is nothing but interrupt location register okay so interrupt location register this gives the status of the interrupts which are generated by rtc now rtc can generate only two interrupts here one is cif interrupt and the other one is alf interrupt okay so if any of these interrupts are generated then the respective bit will become one right? because it, these are the status flags of those interrupts okay so if this have become one if interrupt enable of uh, RTC is enabled, then the processor will execute the ISR. Okay, and at the end of the ISR, definitely again we have to make or we have to clear it to zeros. If not, the processor will be executing the ISR continuously. It will not come out of the ISR. Okay, so these are the bits which are going to represent the status of the RTC interrupt. That is CIF interrupt, counter increment interrupt. It means and then ALF interrupt, which is nothing but alarm interrupt. Okay, so ILR will give you the status of the uh, interrupts which are generated by RTC. <coughs> and uh, how to clear this? So in the ISR, you can clear this by again writing a logic one. It internally performs XOR operation. So 
already it is 1 now you are writing 1 then it uh, the result would become 0 okay next we have ctcr now clock tick counter now it is a 16 bit register out of the 16 bits we use only uh, 15 bits okay now this is the register which gets incremented by one for every clock pulse that the rtc is receiving okay if rtc is enabled then it will get the clock signal from the external or else from the uh, vpp divider now as it gets the clock signal now this particular register gets incremented by one for every clock pulse okay now when it reaches its maximum value or else when it ro rolls over from its maximum value then it means that one second have been completed then the second register gets incremented by one so incrementation of the second register depends on the ctcr register okay and it is a read only register now as you can see uh, its maximum value is 32768 so as it is starting from zeros so the maximum value now here would be 32767 so when it rolls over from 32767 to zeros again so it means that one second have been completed okay then the second register gets incremented by one and it is a read only register so we cannot modify content of this particular register or we cannot initialize it with some value okay we'll see one more register that is ccr which is nothing but clock control register as i every time say that whenever we come across a peripheral then we can guess one particular register that is a control register okay so with the help of this control register we can configure the functionality of the uh, entire peripheral okay so here the same thing again it uh, it is a 8 bit register now out of these 8 bits we'll only use 5 bits now as you can see the first bit that is clock enable so if you if you if you program this particular bit to logic one it means that rtc is enabled okay so it means uh, clock tick counter will count the pulses which it is receiving okay and then ctc reset so that is clock tick counter reset as you see uh, ctc is a read only register you cannot initialize it to some value but you can reset it by programming this particular register 2 or by programming this particular bit to logic 1 so if you make it to 1 then it resets the ctc register okay and uh, ct test these are not used in case of uh, lpc 148 and then clock source as i told you that we can select the clock uh, from two different sources one is from the external crystal and the other is from the internal vpb clock okay now whatever it is but the output of those uh, should be 32.768 kilohertz okay so you can select any one of the source with the help of this particular bit if it is programmed to zero then it means that it will receive the clock from the internal source that is from the vpb divider clock okay if it is programmed to one it means that now you are receiving the clock signal from the external source so program it to one when you have an external clock oscillator okay if your board is having external clock oscillator then program this particular bit to logic one if you don't have that then definitely you have to program it to zero okay now let us see one more register that is cir counter increment interrupt register now uh, this this particular register so by using this particular register we can generate one interrupt that is increment interrupt register or increment interrupt okay now here if any one of the bits if any one of these bits are set to one or is programmed to one then it will generate an interrupt whenever the respective register gets incremented by one okay for example if i'm programming this im set to one and the remaining all are zeros then it will generate an interrupt for every second okay if i'm programming this im min to one and uh, all the other bits are zeros then it will generate an interrupt for every minute okay for example if uh, if i'm programming this minutes as well as seconds to one one then it will generate an interrupt for every seconds as well as for every minute okay so this is what cir interrupt okay so when this particular interrupt is generated if you're programming any one of the bit to logic one then the respect to register will uh, generate an interrupt then what happens so it means this particular bit will become one this is the interrupt for interrupt flag for the cir interrupt okay and then you have alarm mask register so mask is nothing but disabling so always as i as i have shown you that time counter registers are the basic registers which we need to program which are going to count the uh, real time okay so from where from those registers we have to get the real time so always those time counter registers if you can see the architecture here always this time counter registers are compared with alarm registers so these time counter registers will give us the real time clock 
okay so always these are compared with alarm registers okay if there is a match then we can generate an interrupt similar to the alarms which uh, we found in our uh, mobile phones or else in uh, something like uh, watches okay so always the clock uh, that is a uh, that is uh, the timer counter registers are compared with alarm registers if you don't want to generate any any alarm interrupt then you have to program this particular register okay if you are programming this amr set to 1 then it means that it will not compare the seconds register with the alarm seconds register okay if you are programming amr minutes to 1 then what happens here is it will not compare the peripheral will not or the comparator will not compare the minutes register inside the time counter group with the minutes register which is inside the alarm group okay so it means you are disabling the comparison between the respective registers okay so if you are programming all of these bits to one that means if you are writing all these eight bits to logic ones then what happens it will completely disable the alarm that is it will completely disable the comparison so that alarm gets disabled okay so whenever a match occurs then it will generate an interrupt now we have C time registers which are nothing but consolidated time registers now these there are totally three registers C time 0 C time 1 and C time 2 all these are the three registers which will give us the current status of time date seconds minutes hours day of month day of year day of week okay as you can see here C time 0 will provide us the status of seconds minutes hours day of week and uh, C time 1 will provide us the status of day of month month and year and C time 2 will provide us the status of day of year okay <coughs> now let us see the other group of register that is time counter group now these are the registers which we need to initialize before using the RTC along with CCR register okay so if you initialize this per these registers then only we can get the real time from the real time from these registers okay the real time is stored inside these or the real parameters are stored inside these registers okay so as you can see here there are uh, a total of eight registers seconds minutes hours uh, day of month day of week day of year month and year so as i have uh, as i have explained now that these registers are always compared with alarm registers okay now that you, know, you can disable that comparison with the help of this alarm mask register okay <coughs> so these registers should be programmed initially okay for example if i want to start my application my application wants to start from 2 hours 2 minutes and 2 seconds then i'm going to initialize this hour register to 2 and then minutes register to 2 as well as seconds register to 2 so as you initialize these registers along with the clock control register then what happens this seconds register gets incremented by 1 whenever the cpcr rolls over from its maximum value to the minimum value so as the seconds register becomes 60 then what happens minutes register gets incremented by 1 so when this minutes register uh, comes across 60 then again hours gets incremented by 1 so this is what happens uh, with these registers now we'll see the third type of register that is alarm group registers now we have uh, we have been talking about these registers so alarm seconds register minutes register hours register day of month day of week day of year month and year so always these registers are compared with uh, this timer counter registers so if any match occurs or if these uh, values are identical then this will generate an interrupt that is alarm interrupt okay so alarm interrupt status flag will be present inside the ilr register okay so this is the second kind of interrupt one is cir interrupt and the other one is alarm interrupt so if there is any match between alarm seconds or alarm registers with uh, this time counter registers then it will generate an interrupt so if you want to disable this particular uh, interrupt or if you want to disable this comparison then you have to program this alarm mask register okay so say for example uh, now seconds is holding some value which is starting from zero now i programmed this al set to 59 so whenever this seconds register reaches 59 then it will generate an interrupt now if you want to disable this then just program this amr with logic one amr seconds with logic one then it will not compare this time counter register that is time counter seconds register with alarm seconds register okay so this is how you can generate the alarm interrupt and then you have the last group of register that is reference clock divider register 
now there are again two two different registers here pre int and pre frac so we have to program these two registers in such a way the output of this particular block should be 32.768 kilohertz why because this is the frequency which will give us the real time parameters okay so we have seen in the architecture there is one block with a uh, reference clock divider so inside that particular block you have these two registers so we need to program these two registers in such a way that the output should be 32.768 okay and we have some formulas for calculating uh, these values like uh, pre int is calculated with this value like integer of so i'm converting it into an integer p clock divided by 32 points that is 32768 minus 1 so by using this formula you'll get pre int and by using the other formula you'll get pre frac that is p clock p clock here is nothing but 15 megahertz minus pre int which we get from this and then plus 1 into 32768 okay so we'll calculate this and uh, we have to use those values so so that we'll get only 32.768 kilohertz okay now let us see a small example uh, based on this so what i want is my application wants to start from 2 hours 2 minutes and 0 seconds okay and i want to display this real time on the terminal by using uart okay so for that what i'm doing here is uh, i have used first the header file and then i'm using one prototype uh, this is send send prototype send function prototype okay now this will send uh, the real time to the uart okay and then uh, this is my main inside main i'm declaring three variables a b c now i'm initializing the ccr to 0x11 which makes the uh, which makes the rtc to be enabled and it will also get the clock from the internal source but not from the external source okay and then as my application is demanding which will uh, start from 2 hours 2 minutes and 0 seconds so i am initializing the time counter group registers that is har to 2 minutes to 2 and then seconds to 0 okay and then i have to initialize this pre int and pre frac so i have calculated the values then i've got 1c8 and 61c0 now these values will give us 32.768 kilohertz frequency at the output so this values give, will give us the real time clock and then pin cell 0 as i'm using uart so i have to configure two pins like tx and rx which are for gpi was which are now acting as gpi was to be configured as uart pins so that is done with the help of this pin cell zero register okay and then i'm using uart configuration registers okay we have discussed about these uart registers uh, in uh, in serial communication inside lpc2148 okay so lcr i'm programming uh, it to 83 so it means that the character length should be 8 bits okay and uh, and and uh, we are using only one stop bit okay and uh, as i'm making the msb as one so it means that i can access the divisor latch registers which is nothing but uh, generating the baud rate okay so i'm programming it to 61 it means that i'm going with 9600 baud rate so i'm then again making it to 03 which means that now i can access rbr and thr registers okay so now what i'm doing here is i'm uh, i'm accessing this uh, or else i'm reading seconds minutes and hours as i have initialized this now it will it will start uh, its operation that is uh, the second register will be get uh, will get incremented by one for every roll over of ctcr okay so i'm reading the seconds minutes and hour register and then i'm uh, i'm just uh, calling my, my function with uh, these parameters like a b and c so whatever the value that or whatever the parameters that i read here that i get here now i'm i'm passing those parameters to my function that is send now what my send function has to do now it has to display this time exactly on the uart okay so i'm receiving these parameters and then i'm splitting these parameters like if i for example say that i've got 25 seconds so i'm the i'm splitting these parameters to 2 as well as 5 okay by using these two statements i'm just uh, separating 2 and 5 and then i'm transmitting those 2 and 5 with their ascii representation to the uart okay and this is for colon so initially i'm i'm, I'm separating this uh, c so c is nothing but hours so at the output you'll get first hours and then colon and then you'll get minutes and then colon and then you'll get uh, seconds okay so this is a carry written so what happens here again it will start from the uh, the application or else the display will again start from the first position okay so this is the program which demonstrate us how to use rtc peripheral inside lpc 2148 thank you